Hello everyone, Scott Luthold with 4 Expedition. Welcome back to another episode on our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I strongly encourage you to do so if you really like outdoor adventure content. I spend a lot of time creating content out in the wild and I really take a lot of pride and, and I have a lot of joy in creating the content that I do and create really meaningful stories to share with all of you. I also do a lot of product reviews and so on. So if you haven't subscribed, I strongly encourage you to do so and it also helps the channel. Today I'm coming to you from a really special place called Cabo Pomo. Cabo Pomo is located about two hours drive northeast of Cabo San Lucas. Cabo San Lucas is located on the southern tip of Baja California Sur on the end of the Baja Peninsula in Mexico. And on the eastern side of the peninsula you've got the Sea of Cortez and on the western side you have the Pacific Ocean. This is just an absolutely extraordinary sea. It's probably one of the most amazing bodies of water in the world. This area is just teeming with wildlife. Whales come here to give birth to their young and come thousands of miles to spend their time right here in the Sea of Cortez. And uh, Cabo Pluma is very special in the fact that there's a national park here. And back when Jacques Cousseau was doing a lot of exploration in the Sea of Cortez, he discovered this area. And at the time, this village that I'm in was a very popular fishing village and a lot of the fish had been fished out of the area and Jacques Cousseau played a role in helping this area become protected as a national park. And um, I've come here with my good friend Robert. He's an avid master diver. Uh, he likes to spend a lot of time down here. He invited me to come down here and, and spend a, a weekend with him, so that's what I'm doing. So I really hope you enjoy this episode. I'll have a lot of great footage for you, so sit back and enjoy the ride. All right, so my friend Robert that I came here with, he's heading out on a dive. I'm gonna go do some snorkeling. Um, I've tried diving in the past. I've gotten as low as about 30 feet. I have an ear problem, so I don't really do all that well diving. And frankly, I'm a little claustrophobic when I go down underwater and I just, it's not something I'm really all that excited to do. However, I am really excited to go snorkeling today because this is just an incredible reef and um, I'm looking forward to that. So. Uh, the dive resort you buy packages here and you can stay uh, in these little villas they're really nice and uh, includes breakfast lunch and dinner and um, you know there's a little bar on the top floor here that I showed you before that's a really nice place to hang out nice breeze has a little bit of a view of the ocean so we're up this morning uh, Robert's preparing to go on his dive and I'm gonna go out on a snorkel with a couple of other people so it should be a good time a very shallow nice area. This is the most uh, or the place with the most coral we're gonna find on the park. Yeah so a lot of uh, hard coral, fan coral and also gorgonias in the area with plenty colorful fish. Yeah most of the time you can find here red snapper, um, sergeant mayor, mirror's idol, parrot fish, uh, trumpet fish, sometimes turtles. So uh, just please look around, follow me, super important guy, we will be with the current the full time, we're not going to swim again, but just please try to follow me all the time and we will try to stay together, right? We're going to, yeah, then we're going to be in between Los Morros and El Bajo, yeah, we're going to be looking for the jackfish, it's the biggest school of fish, very famous in Cabo Pumo, in here guys, we're going to try our best, so please be patient, yeah? After here, guys, we will be to the other side of the park at uh, the sea lion colony. So right now is the end of the mating season. So they start coming back from Espiritu Santo at La Paz. So the colony here is not that big. We are talking about when it's a good season, 30, 35 uh, species of them. 
Uh, now, the last time I was there, I found like uh, maybe 10. So uh, we're gonna try to spend a little bit time with them. And then guys, we're gonna come back inside the bay to Playa Sirenita. This is one of my favorite bays. Not that much coral in the area, but fish. We have plenty of fish on there and also turtles. So look around here, guys. Yeah, you never know where they can.
decided to come down here. I'm staying at a place called Cabo Paloma Beach Resort. And um, it's a nice little place. It's uh, very simple, off the grid. I think their powers run off of solar. I'm not 100% positive on that. My room does have air conditioning, which is really nice. Um, there's, it's one, one big room and a bathroom, two beds. So I'm sharing a room. And uh, I'm literally about 10 steps from the ocean in my room. And so if you decide you're gonna come down here and do some snorkeling or diving, it's an all-inclusive resort. Um, not your typical all-inclusive resort you're probably thinking about in the Caribbean. This one's very simple. It's a diving hotel. The food is really good and um, you can walk down the, the dirt main street to a couple of other little restaurants that are just sitting right on the, on the shore and you can sit and have some, some fresh fish tacos and uh, maybe a margarita or, or something to that effect, some Coronas, and really enjoy yourself. I brought a very small carry-on, nothing else. I mean, literally, I've got a pair of flip-flops, some shorts, t-shirts. Uh, I, I did bring my own snorkeling gear because I have it. It all fit right in my carry-on, so no big deal. And you really don't need a whole lot. And this is pretty typical when you come to Central South America, Mexico. You really don't need a whole lot of um, a whole lot of attire. I mean, I guess if you're going far southern uh, South America, which I've been, you know, it's a different climate down there right now. But uh, anywhere in uh, Mexico, Central America. You really don't need to pack that much. I just bring a little backpack, a couple of t-shirts, maybe two pairs of shorts, a long sleeve shirt, a hat, some sunscreen, and um, a couple of changes of underwear. And if you get the underwear that uh, is the quick dry stuff, you can just wash your pairs of underwear in the sink every night and you really need like two pairs of underwear. I do have a pair of um, hiking shoes, which are also my water shoes. You've probably seen those before in my sub videos. Uh, I generally tend to like to wear um, Solomon Tech Amphibians because they're water shoe, they also have a hiking sole on them, and they can also be worn as a clog. And then I bring a pair of flip flops, that's about it. A place like this is an extraordinary diving destination, it's one of the great diving destinations in the world. Yet above the, the surface of the water is also just as extraordinary really peaceful, peaceful place. You walk the beach by yourself and you really get into some deep contemplations. And uh, in fact, Robert and I got in some conversations about, about evolution and creation and, and uh, talking about the amazing species that you see below the surface of the water here that you just really don't see a lot of other places. There's certain wildlife here in the Sea of Cortez that's really nowhere else in the world. The people here are very friendly. They don't really speak a lot of English. Um, Robert, the person I'm here with, speaks pretty fluent Spanish, so we get around just fine. And I've got a little bit of uh, Spanish background, so I can communicate in a couple of different uh, phrases, but that's about it. Uh, they do uh, trade here in pesos, so you do have to get some pesos converted or some cash converted to pesos before you come. And uh, things are pretty reasonably priced here. Uh, this is kind of an Americanized part of the world. Uh, Cabo San Lucas is very Americanized, but this being two hours northeast, um, it's a little bit more local, although people do come here from around the world to, to dive, and people that are divers generally have a little bit of money to spend. Uh, so prices are, are, are less expensive than normal, but um, not as cheap as you might find in places like Belize, where I've been before.
So Robert's decided to do a night dive out here, sit in the boat. Uh, should be some bioluminescence to look at. I'm hoping to be able to capture that with the camera. Uh, but nonetheless, we just had a beautiful ride out here and the, the weather's just perfect and the sunset's really nice. Now there's two. When I'm out on my adventures, I take my time and set up a lot of different shots. Oftentimes you'll find that uh, there's a lot of different camera angles that I capture a shot with and a good example of that is on my camper van trip up to Mendocino County a couple months ago that I posted. There's a couple of scenes in that video that are probably some of my best work ever. One of them is a scene of me in slow motion walking down the beach and then the other one is a scene at the end where uh, I'm reading part of my journal and in either case, uh, it took a lot of different shots to set those scenes up. And in particular on the second one where I'm talking out loud and reading my journal entry, there's a, there's a section of that particular video where I'm walking on a cliff at the headlands in Mendocino, the town of Mendocino. There's a headlands area that's uh, between the town and the ocean shore. And I actually had to set up about six different shots with my iPhone. So one shot was from completely the other side of the bay. Another shot was from the back end of a, of a path that I was on. Another shot was a point of view looking down at the trail. And then another shot was of me toward the end of the trail out on the cliff looking at the ocean. And it took a lot of work to set that up. but when you're a single camera person and you're using nothing but one iPhone and I do have a couple of other devices that I use to help me out I've got a Pivo which is a really cool device that allows you to take your iPhone and it has uh, facial recognition and so it acts almost like a cameraman it follows your face around I just got that off of Indiegogo I'm really looking forward to playing around with that I've also ordered a product that is basically a pocket-sized drone with a 4k camera so I'll be able to capture some shots around my campsites and things like that. But for the most part, I have one flexible tripod, um, and then I have my iPhone X. And then occasionally if I'm diving or, or snorkeling or spending time on my paddle board, I'll use my GoPro 3 Plus. But other than that, it's pretty much uh, all editing. And um, I really feel like when you're capturing video content for a YouTube channel, if you want to create quality content, it's all about how well you can edit.
beautiful morning this morning. Sun's out, nice bright blue skies. Heading up to the main building for some breakfast. And then uh, Robert and I will be packing up our gear and heading to Cabo San Lucas. We, um, we met a guy that was diving here. That's the general manager of a hotel in Cabo and he's hooking us up with a nice place to stay down there. So we're gonna check it out, stay over there overnight and we'll be flying home tomorrow morning. Water temperature is pretty warm in there, but it's a really nice clean pool area. And uh, looks like they're getting ready to take some boats out for some diving. As I mentioned, this resort offers uh, packages of three meals a day. Nice little upstairs restaurant area. What a truly incredible beach.
So Robert and I made our way down the coast to Cabo San Lucas yesterday and uh, had a really nice afternoon and evening here. This morning we're flying back to Phoenix. I wanted to take a moment to thank everyone for spending some time with me here at the Four Expedition YouTube channel. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Until the next episode, take care.